Hi everyone, thank you for watching. If you like this channel and you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. It's completely free and it really helps the channel to grow and to thrive. Thank you. We're back again. Hello everyone. Hi everyone, how you doing? Linda and I are going to talk about the current state of affairs and as we predicted last time we said a number of things but we said that just watch in the next week a lot of new things will happen and sure enough you know there are all these different things that have happened since then including yesterday's uh you know Kamala on Fox uh, which was you know uh, fascinating for a number of she years. showed her strength she showed her strength she did she did and uh I think overall it's going to help her because they're not, you know, you go on there, they try to pin all the problems, you know, on, on the Democrats and her. But yeah, she was showing her strength. And I thought that the highlight was when near the end, she got angry, you know, and kind of said, like, what kind of person, you know, whenever you, you criticize the guy and he starts to threaten to put you in jail, I mean, what kind of person does that, which is true, right? I thought the one opportunity she missed which, and maybe this wouldn't be correct, but, you know, they say that she prepares a lot, but I wish she'd have this ready as a kind of a response and say, okay, let me ask you a question. So if America thought that his immigration plan was so good, you know, the way he was doing his thing, putting children in cages and all that stuff and pretending to build walls, why did they vote him out in 2020? There why? You go. Right? Okay. But, oh, and no, I know the answer. You're going to say, well, he said he never lost. Well, guess what? He did lose. Okay. He did and, lose. That was the answer to your question. And then the other thing I think she did really well, she tried to say, we've been trying to work on this, but you guys don't want to cooperate. And when we get a really good plan, your orange you know, abomination says, no, 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 let's not use that. I need to run on the problem. I don't want to solve the problem, right? So that's what's happening. But they were, he was really quite you know, intense. But you know what I thought was funny? Uh, you know, Drudge, he's actually a Republican, the Drudge Report? Yeah. He doesn't like Trump at all, right? So the the image says it's the two of them debating and it says cat eats fox. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I thought that was hilarious, you know. I saw something too where he was standing there swaying for 30 minutes at that thing and Governor Nome was there and a couple of people passed out and you could hear them yelling, turn the air on, turn the air on, because I guess they were suffocating. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. And, I mean, that, like, and so there, people are yelling, and two people passed out, and someone said, "Good thing Nome didn't have her gun on her; she'd probably shoot them, put them out of their misery." <laughs> he should have asked, "Are there any dogs here?" You know. Yeah, <laughs> she, she's such a meanie. I know, I know. It's uh, it's really something. The other thing I I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, I was. You know, we we're tuning in about a week ago, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, and the polling seemed to be showing her leading, and then it's still tight, but leads everywhere. All of a sudden, this message gets out that, oh no, now he's leading. Yeah, that's a bunch of bullshit. He I know, because I thought, I thought, well, this, this doesn't make any sense. And then it turns out, now again, it depends who you listen to, right? Yeah. But I would encourage people, go listen to Midas Touch. There's a video where they're explaining that just like in 22, they flood the zone with questionable polls, and then all of a sudden it looks like they're doing better. Remember in 22, they were saying, oh, there's a red wave coming, there's a red wave coming. Yeah. And then now in 22, Trump wasn't running, so then they just lose, and then they complain. This time, I think it's a setup, because if you think about it, they want people to think they're winning, their people, and then when they lose, then they can say, well, obviously someone is cheating because the polls were saying that we were winning. That's, yeah, I think, that's what, what he's doing. Is. It's all a fraud. Yeah, yeah. He's okay. out of his mind, by the way. He's absolutely out of it. Did you see that little town hall he had where he's talking? And that one guy said, look, I was a, I'm a registered Republican, but I can't vote for you based on uh, January 6th and based on blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh, that was a loving gathering. It was a day of love. It was a day. The only person killed was by, uh, you know, the the intel in, in the Capitol. They shot that woman like just 
Like she wasn't doing anything wrong, even though she broke a window and was up on the ledge trying to jump in. I know. I mean, I, I mean what, what amazes me is, is how... But everybody was like this. Did you like see? Like this. That? Yeah. Like the thing is, though, in what universe, explain to me in what universe it's okay for someone to incite a mob to rush the capital, the seat of government, try to kill, threaten to kill the VP and defecate on the walls. What country is that when you allow something like that to happen? I don't get these people. You know, and now they're saying nothing happened. We have that. We have yeah, the video. Oh, and I didn't ask them. I asked them to march peacefully. He didn't say that. No, he said he said march peacefully. And he said at the same time, you have to fight like hell, right? Fight like hell and I'll be right with you. I will go with you. And, and what they, I, of course, they probably didn't let the guy, I didn't see the whole thing, but my response to that would have been, okay, why did you sp spend three hours staring at the TV? Why did yeah. you stop it? I think he did mention that. Well, I mean, because if you're being peaceful, what are you doing? Staring at the TV. People were begging him. McCarthy I mean, was calling him. What did Kevin McCarthy was saying? What are you doing? Stop it. All of them. Yeah. But I mean, even he knows, he knows you're on record 180 minutes. Is that false? Is that not true? Is that not, yeah. you know, that's by the way, what Jack Smith is going to present. He's going to present oh, that. Oh, and when yeah. he, and by the way, when you present that in a DC case with a DC jury, good luck with that. Because you know what? They're not in the mood. Like remember the 1940s, People were charged with sedition and they couldn't convict anybody, but people have gone down with sed for sedition this time around. You know, this yeah. time around, they're not in the mood for that for a good reason. I mean, it's on TV. We all saw it. You can't pretend Wait it a didn't happen. A yeah. peaceful. And they defecated on everything and smeared the walls. I mean, what is that? It's well, Bunch it's the animals is what it is. Exactly. It's it's horrific. And it, no country, no country. He also, he's always talking about the country's going to hell. It's all falling apart. Listen, Donald, no country can work if you allow that kind of nonsense. If you allow someone like you to do what you did, uh, by the way, not to mention, and in the background, you're move, doing all this paperwork with fake elector schemes. What are you talking? I mean, how, how is that allowed? It's not. The answer is it's not. That's why you're being charged. That's the whole point. OK, plain and simple. So what is Kamala since we're talking about her? How's her chart looking? Could you tell she was going to be pretty powerful? Oh, yeah. No, her chart, she is. The thing is, they both have Jupiter, which is really good, but hers is better because it's cleaner. It's on the near the ascendant degrees. In his case, it's mixed up in an opposition. So that is way more likely to knock you back because you pursue ways of doing things that are overconfident and basically wrong. It doesn't work out as well, right? And that, right. that's what's going on. So yeah, no, absolutely. And the other thing with her is, I mentioned it in a recent video, she has gone through lots of Saturn pressure since July and she's done well. She's done well with it. You know, it's just the pressure of running for president. Right. And to me, that's a great message because it means, you know, that she's in good shape. Oh, listen, she she knew she had her boots on. But that Fox News, that guy tried to over talk her. And, but she said, well, let me tell you something right now. I'm not representing Biden's administration. It's going to be my administration. Of course. But she's, right. she's, you know, because they all, because Biden did this. Not that she's saying she doesn't approve of Biden's. I think she's very proud of what the work they've done. But she's like, you know, just like what she told Netanyahu, I was just telling you about, because that big wig died. Um, Netanyahu, Oh, it's I'm listening to the book Fire by Bob Woodward. And he said that Netanyahu went in behind closed doors to have a meeting with her when he was there and he met with the president. And he said he thought it was a nice meeting. And when he leaves, she announced to the press, yeah, he needs to get out of Gaza. And he was shocked and furious at her. And then he I went bet. to Trump. Yeah. No, I mean, look, Kamala, the thing with Kamala that's most obvious to me is how she's been totally underestimated, you know, in the way she's able to defend herself. The, and I can explain it astrologically because the year she's been that she went through while she was VP, there was a big transformation happening, which doesn't always happen, you know, just because you're VP. But for, for her, something very deep was happening where she became more and more empowered. And so now, She's a lot more confident and she can represent herself better. And, you know, she's ready 
for the presidency. It's it's that simple. You know, um, you told me that's one of the reasons I just adore your charts, etc. You told all of us years ago. Was it about two years ago? You said, uh, "Look at his chart. He's getting ready to flounder. He's getting away with everything. It slides right off of him." And you named the months beginning this month. I don't remember what month it was. And you said, uh, yeah, he's he's getting ready to get his just desserts. March of 23. I remember that. Was and then, that it? Okay. And, well, and then there was another bump, huge bump in August of 23, because that was another turning point. And now he's on, you know, it's it's that sign. A sign is very unfriendly to him. And it has... You can't believe it. He can't believe that he can't just smooch things over and double talk and do all that wave stuff he likes to do. Well, you know, it's 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 the it's how things work. I mean, at a certain point, when you behave the way he behaves, you run into a brick wall. You run into problems, right? And uh, you know, remember that we were talking weeks and weeks ago when the Biden left the race uh, yeah. and Kamala Kamala comes in, but. You know, history will show that he was instrumental in bringing her into the picture. Because not that he said, by the way, his debate, if that debate in the, in the end of June is with Kamala, Kamala would have done the same thing that she did to him during the debate they had, because Kamala would have said, you're completely crazy, the stuff he was saying, which is what she said, right? But Biden couldn't project. So then Kamala comes on the scene. That's him. That's why he was saying later, oh, I wish I hadn't done that, right? So yes, history will he, say he pushed, he pushed by now by making fun of him. So he arranged his own destiny. He brought in the opponent that he didn't need. That he, and and I can't think of a better scenario uh, because where we are right now, because of women's issues, right? She is the best representative by far, right? By and, far. You know, a lot of these You're people are going to get your confederates out there that would never vote for a black woman. Sure, sure. But, to vote for a woman, but a black one. But she, it, there's just too many good people out here that are saying, yeah, put sure in front. Yeah, you know, and by the way, the thing is, people go polls, polls, polls. You get conflicting polls, all this stuff, right? But look at the voting, right? First of all, go back to, all the way back to 17, they keep losing election after election because the people... Overall, even though many do want it, more than that don't want it. They keep pushing back. Yeah. You know, these people now, uh, Georgia, I saw the 300,000 votes first day, right? Okay, 55% women, 45% men. You know what that is? Really dangerous to you because you're going to see a woman, uh, in, a, a tsunami, right? Like in reality, you know, people are saying that we're in a civil war. We sort of are. It's a cold civil war. We're also in a gender war. This is a gender yeah. war between men and women. And I'm telling you from the astrology, women are going to win that war. Thank God. Thank God. I mean, because yeah, what was this so the planet? You said this planet represents women. Eris. Eris, Eris and Pluto in the sky are in a struggle. They were deadlocked in 2020 and they're still there. Eris is in a better place. And she is herself. <laughs> She's like, if you're an astrologer, you, you see how ironic and almost funny all this is, right? Because Trump steps in there and manufactures, you know, brings in Iris so that she'll get in his face. Now, it's not just her. Iris represents people like Stormy Daniels, um, E. Jean Carroll, that other woman that he tried to grow up on the plane, Judge Chatkin. You know, there are many, many manifestations of that. All of them are bad, and you'll never see the end of this. And, and by the way, it's very just because he spent his entire life abusing women. That's he a did fact. He could. Yeah, I so I a woman that said he grabbed her, groped her walking down the streets of New York. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that, but, and, what do you think about Stormy Daniels, the latest thing that just happened? Well, you know, it's funny when I saw that, I thought, you know, they were treating they're treating her like 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 a low life because can you imagine if someone said to you, OK, well, Linda, you are 650,000, right? But we'll let we'll let it be 625. You know, that's like, come on. I mean, if you said we'll cut it in half or something, you're going to take $25,000 off just for that. But I have a feeling that they knew don't don't offer more because then it'll get out and then it'll really be a problem, right? Okay. I don't <laughs> see anything happening because of this. No, I, I don't. Oh, I don't either. Charges. Because, no. because uh, what did they call that? What is the name of it when you do an in, in the non-disclosure? Non-disclosure, yeah. That's very common everywhere. It is, but the thing is, they were trying to silence her 
by offering peanuts, right? Because, right. and my right. feeling is that they knew if we offer more than peanuts, because you know, Trump, think about it. If he thought, okay, if instead of, imagine that he said, okay, you know what? You don't have to pay a penny as long as you shut up. But then that gets out and that's really bad. So they realized, no, no, you know, they tried to do this little thing of, uh, well, you know, it's not 650, we'll leave it at 625, which is an insult, which is why she said, no way, I'm not taking that. Well, the attorney said, no way, no way, she won't do it. Ask of her. Of course. No way, yeah. she's not going to do it, I'm telling you right now. Yeah. But that, but they, this happened this summer, and they just now released it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's... Uh, but it's... God bless them. And, you know, she, uh, I just, she got the money, 600, over 600,000, I don't know how much the total was. Just from um, GoFundMe. GoFundMe, yeah, no, I mean, and it's uh, this is what happens. This is what happens that, you know, for every negative force, there's often a counter force. And I think people writ large, especially Democrats, should be encouraged that, look, there are more of us. We just have to yeah. vote. We just oh, have you to know vote. that pissed them off that regular folks gave her enough money to pay off that debt. Yeah, but that's that's what happens. I mean, that's the world we live in, and it's uh, you know it's entirely possible that it goes that way. And so, whenever you feel more negative about the situation for whatever reason, just realize right that right. the energy is on our side. So, yeah. Hi, Linda and Andre. My question is, what does Vance's chart look like? This is from Lola. You know, Vance's chart has him. The the best way I can put it is. It's showing him in a prominent place, much like Trump is in a prominent place, meaning he's he's known, he's out there. Well, that's obvious, right? He became right. the the VP. It doesn't show him winning. It just shows him uh, in a place of prominence, right? And and that's that's basically it. Now, I my feeling about Vance, and you can tell me what your perspective is, but my feeling about Vance is that he is trying to be MAGA part two, right? He's the the Trump replacement. But what I think is going to happen is that he'll be competing with people like Nikki Haley, who will try to bring it back to a more normal Republican Party. And it may take a while, like two to four years, but I don't, I think MAGA's going to die, you know. MAGA's going time. back to the dry, yeah, all those people. Yeah, yeah. It's There's just a that, huge influx of subpoenas going out after she wins. And Jack Smith can feel comfortable in knowing Jenny Thomas and everybody, they're all going to get subpoenaed. Well, and then a guy like Vance, it's its like you've basically like you've chosen the wrong horse. You had this idea in your mind. And I mean, he's, uh, I just can't believe it. Someone that back in 2016 was correctly telling us how Trump is immoral, this and that. And now he's just, you know, happy as a clam to lie through his teeth, right and left, and to even tell people like on, on TV, so we can all see it. You know, I'm, I'm making this up to, so that you can, to force you guys to say bad things about Kamala. That's what he was saying, essentially, right? I'm making up a story. Well, you're making up a story, but you're hurting people, actual human beings. I, these people are honestly the total scoundrels. I mean, the lowest of he, the lowest. His wife wrote some scandalous thing about Kamala and made some sort of judgment on her. I think it was even about her looks or something. And somebody wrote, yeah, I can see why your husband likes couches better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that thing, that thing, I didn't read the book and I don't plan to. I think that whole thing is based on how he was probably ma making some statement about how, you know, instead of being with someone, you just go be with yourself on the couch. And then now they're making it into a big story. So, but... You know, it was funny though. I liked it. Yeah, it's funny. And the thing is, they invite they invite all these memes and these funny responses because of the way they play. Like, you know, the amazing thing is Trump does this too. Uh, he pretends like he's not the one throwing all the insults constantly, right? And if you say anything, oh my God, look what they're saying about me. He does it all day long. I mean, what do you expect? It's like people, you know, someone comes up and kicks you in the shins and then wonders why you, you get upset. Because, you know, don't kick me in the shins. He's doing it all the time, constantly. Yeah. 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 Hey, um, uh, I don't know if you can do this one astrologically. M H said, "I live in Europe, and we've been told to have." She didn't say where in Europe, but we've to been told to have some kind of survival kit so we can go without electricity, water, and food for a couple of days. 
Is something bad going to happen? The government must know something that they're not telling us. Europe's a pretty big place. Yeah, I mean, it depends where in Europe. Hey, hey France right now is going through some, France and Spain, some awful flooding. Well, you know, the only thing is what I would say about this is that, is that if I think, okay, is there, is there a, a meta model, some kind of thing that tells me about upcoming years and without saying that it will be perfect because there's, there's going to be some choppy energy, but I always remember what my namesake, this French guy that 2011, he says pandemic in 2020, and then he dies in 2019 too, you know, to, <laughs> to further tell us how that works. But he said, and for astrologically, the middle of the decade, like 25, 26, 27, the situation improves a lot because the planetary angles are much better. And you do see this in the astrology when planets cluster in a certain place like they did in 2020. Look what happened. It's rough, right? Or yeah. when you get big, big planets opposing each other like 9-11 um, with Saturn Pluto, 1960 Saturn Pluto. So we're moving into a, a zone that is better better than it has been in quite a while. So maybe depending on where you are in Europe, there might be a country where electricity is more of an issue than another country. But overall, no, I mean, I'm not looking at dystopia here, you know, like the whole thing turning into a nightmare. I doubt it. Right, right. Yeah. So um, I got uh, someone as asking um, Sunflower, it's been said that the US chart and Trump's chart are interconnected, particularly in the future, even after Harris becomes president. Is this related to the revelations about Trump's conduct during the presidency and how it impacts U.S. citizens and his fan base? It's related to the two. Yes, you, you see that a lot, by the way. You see uh, people that become president, you notice links to the U.S. chart. And Trump, the most notable link he has is his sun energy links to the U.S. Mars, all the anger, all the belligerence, all the... Right all the, you know, violence even. Mars is that way. It's a vulgar, violent, military type of energy. Uh, so that's the link. But then to say after Harris, well, to me, after Harris is that because he's being chased by the law. So of course you'll hear about it. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Oh, yeah. The story's not over yet. The story continues. And a lot of people are going to be affected that were in on it with him. A hundred percent. But you, if you're talking about Trump alone, Trump and the U.S. chart, eventually, like one of the things, the links between the U.S. chart and Trump is that is when you link Trump's Jupiter is his, I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to expand in any direction. Nothing can stop me. I have no limits. OK, but the U.S. Saturn limits is on that Jupiter. You're asking for trouble. Eventually, the U.S. will say you can't do that. That's not allowed. So then you get in trouble. That's what's going to happen to Trump. But remember that. There's also Kamala to the U.S. Kamala has a very good connection to the U.S. chart. My feeling is that she's going to be way more popular than people are expecting, way more yeah. you know, prominent because she has really good connections to the U.S. chart. Right? Okay. In fact, I, I've had, when I look at it, my sense is the odds that she'll do two terms, not just one, two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's I an example. I was watching another lady who doesn't live in the United States, an astrologer. She said her aspects, and she's not uh, somebody that likes politics, but she did say her aspects are such, she'll more than likely do two terms. There you go. So, I mean, this is the thing. They always, you know, uh, uh, for example, Biden is Sagittarius rising. The U.S. is Sagittarius rising. That's a, a linkage. There's something about that person. Or you can look back at prior, prior presidents, like, for example, George W. Bush, He's born on the same day as the U.S. You know, that's an example of a linkage, right? And you can go back to Reagan, to Clinton. You see these links. Trump, they're there. Uh, but, you know, by the way, Trump, by all accounts, by no matter what, I mean, MAGA says differently, but this guy has had a rough time of it. The whole, As soon as he got in, I mean, it just has never abated because he is this way. He's a total clown. He just cannot, he cannot put his mind on something and behave like a normal human being. So it's just exhausting, you know, to have Talking him. Talking about he loves uh, uh, Kim Jong-un. Yeah, just... I mean, uh, she, by the way, that was the best moment. 
that was the best moment I thought in the debate yesterday, Kamala got angry and said, this is a democracy, okay? You can't do this in a democracy. You can't start th threatening to put people in jail because you don't like what they said. Because, you yeah. know, they were lying, by the way, on Fox. They showed a little piece when he had yeah. talked about, he talked about Adam Schiff. He talked about Pelosi. These are your, you know, pol political enemies or, you know, call them political on the other side. Your solution is to throw them in jail. Please, okay? This is like yeah. Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff is a Democrat. He doesn't like your ideas. Just like, you know, uh, we don't like, say, Liz Cheney's ideas when she, even when she's behaving well. Now she's pro-democracy, but she wasn't exactly a, a Democrat oh, before she, that, right? She voted in, in step with Trump, too. No, yeah, exactly. That's the point. But but you don't, the fact that she, you don't like her ideas, you don't threaten to throw her in the, in the you know, in some dungeon. That's that's what that's what fascists do, right? Well, he talks about executing too. Oh yeah. The, 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 what about the the, uh, the top general, Mark Milley? You know, saying that he's fascist to the core. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's obvious, you know. Yeah. So um, here's the next question. Sorry, I lost it for a second. Um, this was a good one too. Do you think Kamala's going to win Pennsylvania and Michigan? Yes. I do, too. And they were talking about Michigan and that, you know, she, the Palestinians don't want her. And I see her winning still. I mean, you know what? This is, if you, if you want the answer to a lot of these questions, just think. Female tsunami. You know, these, these MAGA people are like, they're like, those people are on the beach, you know, when, they, when the water pulls back and someone should tell them, get out of there because it's coming. It's so what's going to happen. It's going to move in. And by the way, the data is telling you already. You see early voting, they release it. That's a 10-point gap. That's lethal. lethal. That's lethal. And it's Georgia, lethal. too. Georgia, and yeah. Florida. Florida. A while ago, I said, oh, my God. I saw uh, Rachel Maddow look at Nicole, even though I won't be watching them that night of the thing. But I saw them saying, oh, my God, Florida's gone blue. And I remember saying that out loud, and I thought, oh, I, I guess I'm wishing it. Couldn't be. There's a possibility. There is a possibility. Now, the, the only thing that's left here, I think, is is how smooth it is. Because you're, you're saying, I've heard you say that it's not just a, a neaking, you know, close victory, that you think it's it's comfortable, right, the victory? Yeah. And yet, I, I, don't, I don't see how it gets settled until at least December or maybe... It could even get well, worse. Well, there might than that. be a couple of states they're fighting on, but I see you being able to say Kamala is the winner. That's what I saw. Well, yeah, that's that. Yeah, okay, that that pretty much makes sense. You do, but see they're going to argue and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, they're going to try. Mostly, some of these. Uh, I don't know who I was reading yesterday, but I actually saw them having to put it on hold. Like it looks like he wins, and then they challenge it, and this is like a, a senator or something. So there's something that's going to happen more so than Kamala. You mean like not the presidential race, some other thing? No, I'm seeing Kamala, you know, doing it. Mm. And the thing is, she's going to win by such a wide margin in a lot of places. People, you guys don't seem to understand. People are done. It's just your white Confederates that are going, yeah, Trump. But it, a lot of people who voted for him even last time are going to vote for him this time. Well, and look at those people to... Talking in that thing with their arms like this, you know. Yeah, no, it's true. And then he's totally over there spinning it and lying. And it was just beautiful. It was a love fest. No, it wasn't. No, no, I know. It's a, the, the spin, the spin is remarkable. How do you see the uh the Senate and the House? We win big time. I saw that one guy that's an independent in Nebraska win by a landslide. Hmm. Wow. He's going to well, take that seat away from that Deborah something who lied like Susan Collins and said, I'm not going to win again. Yeah, she ran again and she's going to beat her. And I love this guy. He's a Navy veteran. He's not taking any corporate money. Good. And he yeah. says, you know, 50 percent of Nebraskans are barely making it day to day. And you got this woman living the hog heaven over here and not allowing us to get our medicals covered, not. You know, let minimum wage be dirt poor, where we're barely surviving. He says, we need to raise the minimum wage. We need to get the medical. And he's an independent. He's not going to be beholden to anyone. So someone said to him, listen, if you win, and he will win, 
I think he's way ahead. Um, well, then what about when you're in, in the Senate? Are they going to uh, put you on committees because you're not a dem you know how that is? Mm -hmm. He says, well, all that matters is that I get in there and, and my voice can be heard on a lot of issues for the state of Nebraska. Well, let me tell you something. I, as soon as they said that, I could see him on committees. Well, you do get on committees if you're if you're of similar. Like Bernie gets on committees, and Bernie's an independent. So as yeah. long as you're, yeah, yeah. I, say that. I see him really. He's the future of politics. He's going to be somebody that's not beholden to anyone. That's he's great. not going to do corporate. All these dinosaurs, Pelosi, and all those, they need to go. The ones that are living off corporate, they need to go. Yeah, well, and that there, I mean, age is taking care of that because yeah. she's basically now she's she's like a you know she's a thousand years old support system rather than the leader. Yeah. Will Kavanaugh and Thomas vacate their seats before the anticipated court battles? I doubt it. Sorry, but I see Thomas having to go, but it might be because he's sick or his wife is indicted. But I see the hearings. I see the Senate sitting there looking down on them and making them answer what for. Why did you tell us in your hearing, why did you commit perjury? Why did you tell us you were going to leave Roe versus Wade alone, alone and then you turned around and changed the whole thing? Yeah, I know. It's just, it's so dispiriting, you know, when people behave that way. Too. It's like a, like a bait and switch, you know. But you see, the thing is, if you're, if you're being a little more optimistic, that was also a mistake that was made by Democrats not making it solidly legal. For example, when Obama was president, he had 60 votes. He could have enshrined it as a national law, but they were assuming it'll never happen. And now you have to do it. Uh, and it's going to be harder because it's hard to get 60 votes in the Senate. So they'll now have you're going to change that. That's how good they're going to do with the Senate. And let me tell you something else. Ruth Gator Ginsburg, she really thought she could live long enough for Hillary Clinton to go in. Yeah, but it didn't happen. Yeah, that's true. You got to do it now. Yeah. Uh, can you please give an explanation of the Grand Trine on October 30th? The Grand Trine, the Grand Trines are good. Grand Trine, the energy, the energy flows. Uh, what's the, let me see what the, um, the Grand Trine happens in in water signs right yeah water signs uh yeah so it's a, uh, it's uh it's good like that that part of it would not be something you would focus on to say something terrible will, will, will take place but you know the other thing is that it moves quickly right these things they don't stick around all that long so yeah. if you happen to be an individual with planets near that grand trine it can feel extra interesting and good for you right but other than that it, it moves really quickly. And it's, it's not even something that I pay a lot of attention to. I pay more attention to when I see, uh, like what happened in 2020, lots of planets clustered. That's challenging, difficult. Or, for example, uh, Saturn and Uranus were uh, transiting in square to each other back yeah. when we had the insurrection because those two planets don't like each other. And so then you can get a rebellion of some type. And it's what happened around that time, right? Uh, yeah, so those are more important. Okay, this is a hard one. I think you've tried to look. Hey, can you put me on pause one second? Sure. Okay, uh, Linda. Linda asks, hi, Andre and Linda. Can you please tell us when Ukraine will be given permission to strike back at Russia? Well, I'm listening to war, Robert. Woodward's book. And he explains in more detail that Biden, who's very good at all this stuff, at politics, he's been in it forever. He said Putin has been threatening nukes for quite some time now. And they don't think he'll never do it. They think he will do it. So they wanted to keep the tone down. That's why they didn't want boots on the ground going in themselves with Americans. Although they give them and they sanction them and they give Ukraine all kinds of material. They're afraid if you the, the United States jumps in, then he'll start spewing rockets. Because that's how sick he is. But I never saw 
nuclear. He may try, but maybe the ET stop. But somebody said, I don't know if they're going to give permission for, I know Germany said, come on, step over that line, uh, uh, Russia, and we're going to blow you out of the water. Nuclear, nuclear is, is not. It's Armageddon and you don't see Armageddon, right? No, no. I mean, uh, you know, basically, I mean, I, I don't know why, maybe, they, who knows, maybe they have these talks in the background because they don't want to scare the public. But yeah. say, like as an example, if I'm Biden or Kamala, I'd say, don't do it. If you do it, we're going to do it back. End of story. It's just, there's no way you get to do a nuclear strike without another nuclear strike. Who is a the A thousand people? percent. So you'll yeah. start, you'll start. And by the way, no one can win those. Certainly not you. You no. destroy Russia. Well, it'll be over. well, who's the big wig in the Pentagon? That big tall guy. He's a black gentleman. Oh What's yeah, the, I can't think of his name, but he's the yeah, he's the. Um, he talked to the liaison in Russia back when all this was. Yeah, he, he said our military is the biggest. I don't I don't do threats. Yeah, we I have know. the most, the greatest world military on the face of the earth, and I don't threaten because the guy said I don't appreciate you threatening. Yeah, so. no, that, no, exactly. You don't need. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great comeback. Anyway, I mean, this kind of thing, you know, it's to me, if you launch a nuke, you're, it's like signing a suicide pact. It's a, well, because even if even if the US or whoever didn't nuke back, the world response to that, it would be so, so horrific because, you know, you're trying to conquer a country. That's what you're doing. I mean, in the end, this is Putin's thing. And the world frowns upon that for good reason. Yeah, yeah. So, and his people won't like him doing it either. No, no. They may so all gather up with shovels and pitchforks and track him down and say, stop it. We want to live, you know. Um, but did you see that North Korea sent uh, their military in and uh, a whole bunch, the big top brass military got killed almost immediately. But a whole bunch of them dispersed and want to join the Ukraine. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, they're so happy to get out of North Korea. And then South Korea said, if we start seeing military from North Korea, give us a call. We'll come over there and fight with you. Yeah, no, I know. Well, this is the thing that, that it's always funny how these countries that are, um, you know, really dictatorial, they try to prevent their people from leaving, which, which is crazy because countries where there's democracy, freedom, nobody asks them, you want to go, go, go anywhere you want. Yeah. And they telegraph, you know, how how lost they are about it. And and eventually what ends up happening is the people that are talented and smart, they leave. So then your country is is weaker as a result, yeah. right? But anyways, this goes to, you know, to me, the Putin issue and Ukraine, again, we have to be patient because you need the next cycle, Saturn and Aries, Neptune and Aries, a little bit in 25 fully in in 26 it takes a while for these things to develop but that's where it's headed and it's not good for him or for russia it just isn't good exactly. i i don't know what the exact outcome would be i just know that he's not on the right side of it and even though he may at times seem like he's winning what no don't don't put and your listen, money if trump got in he might be happy but no it's going to be because kamala gonna put up with his stuff either exactly yeah that's part of the reason exactly Love that's it, it. Can you put me on pause one more time? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Gloria Johnson, did you ever look at her chart? Who? Gloria Johnson. She's the Tennessee. She was part of the Tennessee Three. She's no. running uh, as a Senate candidate in Tennessee. I didn't okay. look at her. No, I have no idea. What's your your feeling about her? I did look I at. I think she. I think she's going in. I, I did look at um, the races, you know, I don't have all the information. I only have uh, some charts, but then all, all I have is birthday, so I don't have the full info. But I looked at Josh Hawley and Lucas Kunz and then uh, Colin Allred and, and um, uh, you know, the idiot, Ted Cruz. Cruz. And, but... Uh, What'd you get on them? Well, with what I have and... You know, don't take this one to the bank as 100%. But to me, they, it's Holly that has more problems than Cruz. Cruz isn't great either, but he's got a little better support than uh, astrologically. Than, uh, you know, than... Uh, Holly's going to lose big time. 
Who's going to lose? Josh Hawley. Josh, well, so then there's the question of Cruz. I mean, this is the thing. That would be a, a, a cataclysmic event, you know, if you if you knock out Cruz because... It's a very good possibility. Very good. Yeah. I think if, if they say there's some untoward things happening in that, mark my words about this, to where it could even be on the fence and all kinds of hearings, this may be the upset. But because mm -hmm. his cards... What's this guy, the guy that's running against Cruz? His name is uh, Allred. Allred. He, his cards were like, yes, nine of cups, this and that. Then he got the ten of swords. I thought, what the heck? And then it looks like some sort of legal process. So somebody's going to say no, or they're going to fight this. Texas, and he's got, Cruz has got the, the echelon of Texas helping him. Yeah, Texas is Texas is very. Uh, very and this guy's done nothing for the people of Texas, not a thing. But Josh Hawley, his newspaper in Missouri, they said he's worthless. the The biggest newspaper in Missouri said this man has done nothing for us. Yeah, no, and he's. I mean, he's so dangerous because he was part of that whole insurrection thing, and you know, it, it's just it, it, we're living through times where, man, some of these people need a comeuppance because. It's kind of behavior like the like Johnson too, you know, the Speaker of the House. I mean, what a what a, what a scoundrel to be. You're a lawyer, and you are basically, it's like you're backing illegal behavior. I mean, a lawyer should be defending the law. It, anyway, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, and yet, it, it and yet, not here much longer. But you know, but interestingly, I mean, think about it, right? Even with all that, uh, Johnson, despite all that, he passed the the budget so that Ukraine could get their funding. So even and that turned out, did. yeah, yeah, because because that would have been disastrous if if Ukraine were still behind the eight ball with no weapons, and at least they have you know they have a little bit more for the and time. Germany's being. giving them a bunch of tanks and a whole bunch of people. Yeah. So exactly. listen, um, do we still have time? Yeah, we have some more time. Sure. Um, how does the full moon fit into Judge Chupkin releasing Jack Smith's J6 appendix? Okay. That, is that supposed to happen around now? Yeah. Okay. So the full moon, the way it fits, is that it's not a good full moon for Trump. What I, what I said in a recent video, this is not a good time, right? And so, but that's one thing. Seldom will you say, well, it was just that. Right. They really, they said some things. He doesn't like it. No, there's probably going to be more other stuff, right? Including that for example, if it turns out, and it's very possible, that the Kamala interview in, on Fox turns out to be a real asset, you know, it goes viral or something, he's going to be really upset because he didn't want them to do the interview because it's too risky. Why do you think he doesn't want to debate her? Because he's scared. He's, he's too scared, right? So, yes, that's one example of something that could definitely correlate with something very uncomfortable because where the moon is, is difficult for Trump. It's not just that, Mars, it's Moon and Mars, they're all hitting him right now, like until the 27th or so, Why dangerous not? territory. So then the other thing with him is he's constantly raging anyway, you know, he does like all caps, tweets and all that. You'll see it accelerate and get even more crazy. But the bottom line is that it's not good. That's the answer in a nutshell to all that. And people are getting a little tired of it. Well, like I, yeah, I would say so by the millions, no question. I don't think astrology, you can answer this question. Will there ever be a law that prohibits making up lies like MAGA? Well, I can say something. Here's something I can say about that. The When you're looking for a, a planet that will drift into lying and disinformation, Neptune. Neptune entered Pisces in 2011, gets fully out in 2026. You will likely see a switch because this has been growing and growing. I remember in 2011 was when the people like Ted Cruz would go on TV and just blatantly lie. Like he, at one point, he he stopped the government. You know, he closed down the government, and then he said, "I didn't do it. The Democrats did it." I remember looking and going, "What? Are you insane?" Right. It's like the people that follow you will believe anything. I'll just say anything. Pigs are flying. You know, whatever. That has been the case for years and years. It peaks under Trump. We had a president who lied thousands of times. It was just lie after lie after lie. Now we're getting near the end so give it give it a couple of years and it'll switch i think it'll get better let's say that yeah 
I think I think they might put restrictions on even people like Fox News can't go on with them. Well, you know what happens, Linda? Sometimes it's not even the restrictions is that society goes in a certain direction. And right now it's acceptable. And then it starts to become unacceptable. It's kind of like how people used to smoke. And now, you know, you go anywhere. Right. Not well, here, McCarthyism. Not here. McCarthyism was a big deal. And then it was embarrassing. And then it became embarrassing. Yeah. So it's a lot of times it's a question of things just move in a certain direction. And I think those the, the cycles are changing in a big way as we go into the middle of the decade. So just be patient. Don't expect it to be overnight, but I think it will improve substantially. Okay, so what does the energy of the USA look like in December? Um, well, I'm focused more on November. In November, there is a we're on a Saturn station, which I think where would you you see it where it is in the U.S. chart? To me, it signals gridlock, like where it's not something is stuck. Right by December, it's getting better. I would say mid December because there's also a retrograde period there late November and into mid-December, right around the middle of December, which, by the way, is that's usually when they certify. They start to certify the votes and everything, so that fits. There is some possibility that it could go beyond that, though. It could. I'm not ready to rule it out yet that it could even be delayed longer, but my best guess is mid-December, you know, for the situation to to finally settle. Um, Dano said, could you tell me about Mars and Venus in Aquarius? Well, Mars and Venus in Aquarius. Aquarius is the is a sign of friendship and, uh, you know, having lots of contacts and networking. And it's a really good, if you have Mars, Venus and Aquarius, that becomes your talent. In relationships on a one-on-one -on -one basis, often people with a lot of Aquarius, they, they're not as passionate or as, you know, as a no, in the relationship because it's, it's, it's kind of a airy, you know, relational sign, but not, not particularly warm. But even so, it doesn't mean you're not going to do well in relationships. It just means that's the way your your uh, you know planets function. And those planets in Aquarius, if they're both there, they were under more pressure in 2021 and 2022. Now Saturn has left that region. But here's the next. This is why you, you have to do a proper chart. Otherwise, you're talking nonsense in a way. If you tell me, oh, my Venus and Mars are in Aquarius and they're in the early degrees in Aquarius, then yeah, you should talk to an astrologer because that's getting a lot of Pluto action. Now we're talking a totally different <laughs> scenario, oh, right? a different color. Yeah, it depends. It depends on where they are, you know, because they, they could be anywhere from zero to 30. Are they are they together? Are they apart? You know, you got you right. to gauge that stuff. Yeah. Full moon conjunct natal. This says vertex. Do they mean vortex? Vertex. V-E-R-T-E-X. Uh-huh. Full moon conjunct natal vertex, question mark. Uh, that I, I would say uh, a lot of, more so than usual, faded encounters, you know, with people, people that come into your life that seem to have some major effect on you. But again, you gotta, you gotta calibrate it to the rest of the chart, you know, because if someone says to you, okay, tell me about this part of the chart. This is like you going to the doctor and having him, you know, diagnose you by saying, can you tell me how my health is by looking at my elbow? You know, I mean, right. you got to kind of, you know, look at the whole thing. So here's a good question. We'll make this the last one. Um, what's the biggest surprise you've ever experienced in astrology that never could have been predicted and totally went against astrological norms? Or has it ever happened? The biggest surprise. Um well, never. I, I've never experienced uh, s something like that that I couldn't explain. Like, what the, really, it's more the fault of the astrologer. If you, if you're really surprised, it's because you didn't look deeply enough. And some of my learning, especially the more I go back, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, it's the mistakes that really teach you. You say, okay, this is it, and then it doesn't happen, and then you think, holy smoke, and you look and you realize. Don't blame the astrology. Blame yourself because you didn't uh, check something thoroughly enough. Sometimes the error can be if you don't have all the information, like you don't have proper charts, you know, and you get it wrong that way. So, uh, right, right, yeah, that's that's the best answer I can think of. Not not in the sense, no. Like in other words, it won't. Uh, if if all the info is there, then no, the odds of being surprised go way down, you know, because it turns out according to the charts. Yes.
Well, my friend, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. All right. So we'll reconvene soon. Do, do we have a plan to reconvene maybe next week or like definitely Probably next the election, week because right? things are getting mm -hmm. hot and heavy. All right. Okay. I don't think Trump is going to do Madison Square Garden. I just don't think it. he is. Is that he's supposed to? He's talking about doing Madison Square Garden. I don't think they have enough money to pay everybody to go. Huh. Interesting. And when is that supposed to be? I don't remember, but someone wrote me who lives in New York and said, you know, that's the that tunnel underneath is the main connection and you wouldn't want a whole bunch of people showing up there. No, and then the risk he has is that yeah. he doesn't get a big enough crowd and then it'll turn into a right something negative. All right. Bye everyone. See you next Bye time. everyone.